Hello, hello, it is Ruby Burrito, and welcome to today's video. Today, I wanted to talk about legendary weapons, and I'm going to break this up into three different parts, because there are three different generations of legendary weapons. We are going to start with Gen 1, which actually was around when Guild Wars 2 came out. And before we talk about the how, let's talk about why real quick. So, aside from the aesthetic, because these weapons are very cool, you can see Frostfang is a beautiful weapon. It has a nice little individual movement here with the, with the jaw, and you've got Frost coming out, and Incinerator has its own. Minstrel has its own. You've got music here. Eternity is going to have its own visual effects. Each one is going to be unique. These, while technically a set because they are all legendary weapons, they don't look the same, so that is something to keep in mind when looking at these weapons. Um, the main reason why they're useful is because of the legendary armory. So recently, ArenaNet made it so that once you unlock a legendary weapon, it is actually unlocked for every character on your entire account. So I have access to every legendary weapon, so anytime I need a weapon, I can. I pretty much have a full stat one. That is stat selectable. That is the other key. I can change the stats on, my, on this weapon, on my staff, whenever I want. So it's very, very useful for me. Um, and you can see I can just toss these on. If I hit right, if I right click customize, I can select this. They don't have stats right now. I can apply vipers to everything and now they have viper stats. Very useful. There are two ways to get Gen 1 legendary weapons. The first is the trading post. You can see I could just buy the Juggernaut. It's very expensive, but I could just buy it. So if you don't want to craft, you can just put in a buy order, buy one from a sell order. You can see there's quite a big difference. If you put in a buy order, you have to wait for somebody to sell it to you. They have to be happy with the price that you're willing to pay. And if you're not willing to wait, you can just buy one that somebody is selling. If you do not want to do that, you can go to the Mystic Forge. The Mystic Forge is pretty much where you get most of the items. They're, they do require crafting. This is where I crafted all 21 of my Gen 1 Legendaries. Uh, there is a video of me doing that if you would like to see. But each one has four components. A Precursor Weapon, a Legendary Weapon Gift, a Fortune Gift, and a Mastery Gift. The Fortune Gift and the Mastery Gift are exactly the same for all 20 different Legendaries that you craft this way. Uh, let's talk about the Gift of Mastery real quick. That's going to be a Bloodstone Shard. If we talk to the Mystic Forge Attendant, a Bloodstone Shard is 200 Spirit Shards. It is going to be 250 Obsidian Shards, which you can get Joey various meat. methods. Silver Wastes, World v. World and PvP Reward Tracks. Uh, you can buy them for some currencies. And then you have the Gift of Exploration and the Gift of Battle. The Gift of Battle is a reward track in World v. World. This is the only way to get it. You have to get your Gift of Battle this way. What I would suggest doing is your dailies. If you don't want to play World v. World, just do your dailies. In World v. World, you'll get a little bit of progress every day, and then you can use your... Um, these are the PvP version, but you can use the Potions of World v. World reward to progress that reward track. The Gift of Exploration is Tyria Exploration. You do need to have 100% Tyrian Exploration. Um, when I crafted the 20, I needed to do it 10 times because each exploration gives you 10. Or sorry, each exploration gives you 2. Uh, you can see that this character has full map exploration of all the Tyrian maps. 
So that is one quarter of a Gen 1 legendary weapon. That is the Gift of Mastery. The Gift of Fortune is going to be a Gift of Might and a Gift of Magic. Those each are four stacks of materials, and that's going to be the Tier 6 crafting materials. If we go to Material Storage, it's going to be these. These eight right here. You need 250 of each. They go into two different gifts because you put four items into the Mystic Forge, and then those become half of the components for the Gift of Fortune. You need 250 globs of Ectos. Most, I guess the easiest method to get those is by salvaging rare gear, and then Mystic Clovers. Mystic Clovers you get from PvP reward tracks, will be world reward tracks. You can get them from Drizzlewood Coast. You can get them from the Mystic Forge if by using Mystic Coins. You need 77 of those. That makes up half of the items you need for a Legendary. Now, the other easy one to talk about is going to be the Precursors. So, I had been talking about Frostfang here. The Frostfang Precursor is going to be Tooth of Frostfang. There's several ways to get this. When I crafted all of mine, I just bought them off the trading post. But you can also put four exotic weapons, four exotic axes into the Mystic Forge, and hope that you get the Tooth of Frostfang out. You also can hope to get them from pieces of rare unidentified gear. You can get... In the Mystic Forge, it's not just exotic gear, but it's also rare gear. It has to be level 75. I have not done this method. Other people have. Quite a few people have. Let's, they keep going up on the trading post, but I don't have the patience. Um, and it's also pretty much gambling because it's not a guaranteed method. And you can also get it from drops. I've had, in, in all of my hours played, I've had one precursor drop, and that was the Legend years and years and years ago so that's also not a very reliable method to get them the final legendary gift is going to be the specific legendary weapon gift so if you look at the gift of frostfang it requires a gift of metal which requires you to have weapon smithing up to 400 and it's a stack of four different types of metal so weapon smithing it'll be a stack of or a calcum ingots Mithril ingots, dark steel ingots, and platinum ingots. If we look at the next part, it's the gift of ice, and that's going to be a 400 jeweler, and again, it's going to be 250 orichalcum ingots. It's going to be 100 glacial lodestones, which are down here, and corrupted lodestones. Those you can get from a whole bunch of places but you can also just buy them on the trading post. And finally is the Gift of Sanctuary. That's a specific dungeon gift. We come to the dungeon merchant. We say what armor pieces you have for trade. This is a from Out of the, out of the Waves. That's uh, the weapon merchant, isn't it? Yep, I always mix that up. That's what weapons you have, and we'll look at Honor of the Waves. And here you go, Gift of the Sanctuary. You get, they recently did an overhaul, so Tales of Dungeon Delving you can get from any of the dungeons, and you can also get them from, um, there is an item that you can get from either Black Lion Chests, or even from vendors from each of the different festivals, and it's called a Tyrian Exchange Voucher, and that'll give you 300 Tales of Dungeon Delving. It'll save you a lot of time doing dungeons if you just want um if, if you want to i guess so what i will say is the the gift of ice and the gift of metal are specific to frostfang each of the different legendaries is going to have its own specific gifts so make sure to go to the link in the description to find out which one your legendary would need Final two items you need are 100 Icy Rune Stones, which is straight up just 100 gold. There is a vendor in Frostgorge Sound by where the Claw of Jormag spawns. 
and you just go to him when the event's not active. I can show you where that is. It's right next to the Earthshake Waypoint. There is a vendor right here across from where the Claw of Make lands. And the last item is going to be a Superior Sigil of Ice, which is a handful of silver on the trading post. Once you have those four gifts, you put them into the Mystic Forge, and that's it. That's a Gen 1 Legendary. The 21st Legendary is going to be Eternity. Eternity is special because you have Twilight here. This weapon always looks like this. Then you have Sunrise. But Eternity, up here, changes depending on the time of day. So during the daytime, it'll look like Sunrise. And at nighttime, it's going to look like Twilight. These two are Gen 2 Legendaries. The rest I have are Gen 1s here. Um... But that should wrap it up. If you guys have any questions, please let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you guys so much for supporting. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. And we'll see you in the next one.